Hey, welcome back to my channel, Duct Tape Mechanic, and to another episode of my series, Free on Facebook, in which I find things for free on Facebook Marketplace, and I repair them, recycle them, or repurpose them in another way. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to repair this Kenmore 500 series HE washer that's stuck in a sensing mode. So if you like this video, make sure you subscribe to my channel for more DIY and tinkering videos. All right, so I picked this thing up on the way to the pharmacy one day. It's a Kenmore 500 series auto loading high efficiency washer. It's just a couple years old. It's still got this like blue cover on it. It's manufactured in 2017. The owner said uh, pretty much that she paid a grand for it, thousand dollars for it a couple years back and it's already out of service. So that's a testament to the older direct drive washers I was talking about in my previous video and how long they last. Anyway, so what's wrong with this thing is so once you load it up with some clothes and you hit the start button, um, it doesn't advance from the sensing mode. Uh, so it's supposed to go to wash, then rinse, and go through these sequence here. So when it doesn't do that, there's pretty much three things that could cause this. The load sensor itself could be bad, the main board could be bad, or the third and most likely reason that it's doing this is that either one or both of the water valves are back are bad and I'm, in this video I'm going to show you how to quickly test those um, I I know that these washers and uh, you can put these into diagnostics mode by cycling this through a certain specific sequence it's like three steps this way and four this way anyways I, I can link a video to how to put it into diagnostic mode but if you want to sh uh, but I can also show you a quick way to figure out if the valves are bad or not on this particular type of washer so we'll be, I'll be showing you how to do that in this video and uh, hopefully get this thing up and running real quick. Alright, so I just taped it up. After that, I'm going to undo the three screws that you needed to get access to the valves. One, here. Alright, so then after you undone the screws, just towards you. And up and wiggle it around until you should get it free and there you go lean it up, move it forward a little bit so we can lean it back right. after that we're just going to push in these clips right here and do that on both sides and that should give us access to the control panel. It's one clip, two clips, and then we'll put this back down. Loop. There we go. Here's the control panel. So here's your valve assembly. So um, these valves are in one assembly, so there's no point in replacing one and keeping the other. But basically, we're going to test these. I suspect one of the two is bad, so we're just going to undo the switch right here. You can see that this uh, red hot valve has a red wire going to it, and the blue one has a blue wire, so you don't really need to label them. Basically, these are just solenoids. Um, a solenoid is essentially just uh, um, it's a it's a a wire is wrapped around and uh, it creates when, when current is passed through that wire it creates a, a magnet and inside that magnet is a pin so when it's energized that pin moves back and forth um, and that's what makes a valve so um, by testing the resistance of the wire we can tell whether it's um, the wires open circuit in open circuit um, and uh, just burned out and that's what we're going to be testing so just want to put your multimeter here in uh, continuity mode or resistance mode and see if this has any sort of resistance. We don't really care for the value right now, but then we're just checking to see if that wire inside is not burned out. So we'll put our probe to both the terminals and wait for that reading. It was, looks like we've got 1.26 um, kilo ohms. That's probably normal there. So the hot one looks okay. So we'll do the same thing for the hot with the cold. Pull that off. And when you're in here moving around, make sure 
you don't undo the hose for the pressure switch, otherwise you'll end up flooding your house. Now we'll put that so you can see it, and put that on uh, both the terminals there. I'm gonna move the camera a little bit. So, I put it on both of them, and it's just reading it's uh, an open circuit. So, the cold water valve is burnt, officially burned out. So, the, the wires are no longer um, uh, continuous. So, they don't go from one terminal to the other anymore. So, somewhere along the lines, they got, they got burned out. So, that's the issue. It's uh, the cold water valve solenoid is an open circuit. All right. Well, let's replace this puppy. All right, to replace it, we're just going to unplug it from the main board, which is this eight pin connector right here. That unplugs right there. And this comes with the assembly. And then, let's see. All right, so that's there. And it's just held in with these two screws right here. Um, We'll be getting to those. I think they're T20 screws. Indeed, they are. All right, so after those are out, um, I think we can just pull up. Yeah. And there you go. That's it. So here's the new replacement valves 28 bucks right here for these so I'm going to check out the resistance on these as well so if you need the exact resistance values your valves are acting weird and you suspect that they're burned up or just giving you a hard time um, you have the exact values and uh, so we'll just put the meter to here so I suspect that the the resistance of this coil is around 1.2 kilo ohms, but that's what it was in the hot one. And oh, I put it into a content, uh, resistance mode here. Put it on. Yeah, around one kilo ohm for the hot. And plug that back in, and we'll see what it is for the cold. I highly doubt. That's gonna read an open sequence, uh, open circuit for the cold. Otherwise, I don't know what I'm talking about. All right. So we put that over here. So it's reading around one kilo ohm of resistance for both the coils, whereas our other one is reading around one for the hot and it was reading an open cir um, circuit for the cold. All right, so let's put this thing in. Pretty much to install it, the steps are reverse. Yeah, to install the valves is pretty much the reverse steps, but I don't know if my camera captured this angle, but I did have to lift this up a little bit and stick my hand down there and uh, support the base um, and make sure that this middle piece was propped up while I screwed it down. So um, I guess you could tape it from the, from the bottom as well, but uh, you do want this middle piece to be in the center. Otherwise, it's just going to move around a lot. But yeah, um, that's it. And uh, so I'm just gonna put this back together. I just, it's just pretty much just clip this back on here. Put those three, uh, uh, clip this back on. Then uh, put this back into position. And then uh, put the screws back on and then we'll give us a test. All right, so it's been a few minutes. I can hear it washing and sure enough, it's progressed to the wash cycle so that pretty much fixed it it was an easy fix and uh, hopefully this video showed you how to 
you know, get to the main problem or the, the problem that's, that causes this washer to be stuck in the, the sensing mode, which is the, the failed valves. So I think uh, my daughter, Sarah, liked it as well. Sarah, you like that repair? All right, so if you like that as well, make sure you hit the thumbs up sign and hopefully uh, we saved you some money and stick around for more DIY videos.